<laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to my live. <laughs> Hello, oh hello everyone. <laughs> nice to see you, Carrie and Heather and Lynn, Danielle, Kezia. Oh, good evening, it's so nice to see you. Very, oh, very lovely. Let me just get this sorted. You know, I do this every single week, have this trouble with this thing. I don't even know if I should bother with it. <laughs> How am I going to get it? There we go. Ah, very nice to see you. Hello, Danielle. Ness, Nadine, lovely to see you. Good to see everyone. Hope you're all well. Ah, it's um, I'm quite cold. I'm all wrapped up in my warm jumper. But uh, how are you doing? Are you warm? Are you cold? <laughs> oh, it's so nice to see you all. Nadine, I'm so glad you could make it. I hope you're doing all right. We've all been thinking about you this week. Sending you big hugs. I hope you're all right. I hope you can enjoy this live. <laughs> Paige, hello. <laughs> it's very nice to see you. Paige does my nails and she's brilliant. Look at my lovely nails. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome nice to see you gosh oh heather you've done your first week in your new job i'm so glad you've enjoyed it that's lovely oh vicky and you've got your dressing gown and your hot water bottle on i could do with a hot water bottle i have to say you're wrapped up warm kez here as well <laughs> trish it is so lovely to see you welcome i hope you're doing all right <laughs> really nice gosh so what's been the best what's the best bit of your week been so far let me know what's been the best bit of your week um let me think about what's been <laughs> i'm trying to think what's been the best bit of my week um i think one of the best bits is the fact that my husband is here cooking me my dinner <laughs> and we've got a nice fire going so that um we can have a nice cozy evening but what about you? What's been your your best bit? Heather, I reckon your best bit is that you've had your week in your in your job and that's gone well. So that's good. What about everyone else? Oh San, hello, nice to see you. San made me a lovely um a thing for my Instagram story, um, advertising the live. So I'm very grateful for that. Thank you, San. <laughs> Oh, and Jasmine, you're going out for fireworks later. Do you know, I was listening to a thing the other day and it was saying that fireworks are not such a big thing these days as opposed, you know, compared to um, years ago and compared to Halloween. I used to love fireworks. I, it wasn't so much the fireworks that I enjoyed. I enjoyed going out somewhere where there was a big bonfire and you wrapped up warm and you had stuff like, you know, sausages and soup and just... It was just a really nice thing, being around the bonfire. I used to enjoy that. It was lovely. So, oh, Emma-Jane, nice to see you. How are you doing? You've had a successful week, I think, by the sound of it. <laughs> Let's have a look. So, um, oh, Elizabeth, nice to see you too. Excellent. So, Heather says, what are we having for dinner? <laughs> we're having we're having like a chili a veggie chili i moroccan think moroccan chickpea what are we having moroccan chickpea and lentil stew moroccan chickpea and lentil stew <laughs> nice eh nice i'm very lucky <laughs> it's one of the reasons that i do these lives at six o'clock on a friday <laughs> so so my husband can do the cooking I hope, did you hear me did you hear me i think you've probably heard me say that Right, let's have a look. Oh, Lynn, your hubby and your son took you out for lunch. So that's really nice. Definitely a good thing. Right, let's have a look. Oh, Nadine, best bit of your week is right now. Well, I, that is lovely of you. Thank you so much. It's just lovely to have you here. I'm so pleased. After the week that you've had, I know it's not been easy. And we're all very, very happy to have you here. So, Emma Jane, I'm good. Thank you. I'm great. And son, you're helping your 88-year-old neighbour. Wash, that is really nice of you. How lovely. Really nice. Gosh. So, let me explain a little bit. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Hang on. 
get rid of that. Oh, cancel. Um, oh, Cara, you made it. Nice to see you too. Nice to see you. Um, and Elizabeth, so your meeting with your um, psychologist was very good. Um, so I'm, I'm glad it went well. I'm glad it went well. Thank you. I hope, I'm sure we will enjoy our dinner. So... <laughs> Right. Okay. So let me. So welcome to everyone who's joining joining me. There's there's so many people. So, um, I I will. I like to at the end kind of stay around and say say hello to people. And if I if it pops up and I can see you, then I'll definitely say hello. So like Amy, hello. I can see you. Um, and so the, but but what I want to do is just um introduce myself and let you know if if you're here for the first time let let you know what's going on so this is friday friends and i'm sarah and i'm um, a therapist i work mostly with people who are experiencing anxiety and every friday evening at six o'clock uk time i do these lives where we can just come along and we can chat about what our week's been like you can ask me any questions that you might have around anxiety or mental well-being or self-care um and hopefully it's a really nice friendly safe space and it's an hour so between now and seven o'clock in the evening and um, one of the reasons that this is a safe space is that i have some really wonderful um people who volunteer to um to help me um and so i have lynn 250 i have vicky hodson and I have Jasmine. Um, and sometimes I also have um, Zanshin and Vicky Handlebars. And, but they are here. And this is about having a, a safe space. And so it's really important that we're all kind to one another. We all know what kindness looks like. And so anyone who's not kind would just block and mute and block immediately. Okay. So let's see. Let's have a look. So you are all very, very well welcome. Um, Faith, I can see your um, your post pinned there. Okay, so I don't want you to do that, and I want you to go and I want you to phone someone right now, because TikTok and this live is not the place for us to be able to help you. Uh, unfortunately, this is a a really awful thing that you're contemplating and I can understand that perhaps you are um, in a lot of pain at the moment but what I want you to do is I want you to go and be with someone that you actually know someone in real life or I want you to make a phone call to the Samaritans or you could also call 999 and speak to someone there and get help because that is um, the that's the way to go the Samaritans number is 116 123 if you're in the UK, um, and um, it's really important. I don't mean to disrespect you or to minimise what you're going through right now, but we're in this live and we're in, in TikTok, and we can't help you in the way that we would like to. But what, what needs to happen is that you need to reach out for help, either, as I say, to call 999, um, or to call Samaritans, or to call a friend, okay? So it's really important that you do that right now because if you're um, thinking of hurting yourself in any way, then all that is going to do is going to cause a world of pain to lots and lots of people who really love you and that you make, you make a difference in their life. Okay. So um, what I'm going to do is um, see if I can answer some, some questions here. Um, and um, just to have a scroll through and write some some questions down. <laughs> my <laughs> my friend Paige um, said that she's going to come along and see this live, and and she was joking with me about how interesting a live would be watching someone write questions down. But I have to do that because otherwise I forget because I, I want to remember who's asked me the question and I want to write it down so I'm accurate. So that's what I'll, I'll do is I'm going to um, I'm, I'm going to look and see what questions we've got and I'll write things down. 
Okay. So, Holly. So, Holly's saying that, that, gosh, you're having a hard time because your little one has been in and out of hospital with an in infection. Um, so, I'm... I'm really. I know that's not a question, but I'm gonna. I'm gonna write that down, um, and I'm gonna come and and have a a chat about that. Um, but I'm glad that you're here, and I hope that you can just take some time to look after yourself, and just hopefully this your little one will be much better. But let's have a look. Um, also, so JJ, I'm gonna ask you to talk about fear. So I'll make a note of that. Um, Let's have a look. Um, I'm aware that there are lots of lots of comments and lots of questions, and I I can't always answer them all, um, and so I just try and pick some that I can that I think will be um, helpful to answer. So if I don't answer your question, then it's not that I've deliberately chosen not to answer. Um, it's not about you. It's just that it's impossible to answer absolutely everyone's questions. So. Thank you so much for following. Thank you so much for shares of the live. And thank you so much for any likes or any gifts. You, you were really, really kind and I so appreciate that. So thank you. Um, let's have a look. Um, James, I can see that you've lost someone. I didn't um, catch who that was, but I'm just sending you my love. And I'm sorry that you've, you've had loss in your life. So it's, it's so hard to deal with that. Um, hopefully this can be a nice safe place for you to be tonight. Um, and sweetie as well. Oh my goodness. Um, I'm sorry that you've lost your nana and your dog. That's very sad as well. Okay, and Billy, Billy Hunt, you're asking about um, depersonalization. Um, and derealization. Okay, so I'm going to come to those. So let me answer these questions. So Holly, um, you were saying that you're just feeling exhausted because your little one's been in and in and out of hospital all week. So oh, I do hope that you have some sort of support um, around you so that you don't have to be dealing with this all by yourself. Um, it's really hard when our children are ill it, it you just realize that you know it's it's sort of down to us isn't it I always remember when my little boy was first born and I'd had a cesarean and so um that was really painful and I suddenly realized that he was crying he needed his nappy changing and and I was sort of looking around and for help and I thought oh it's down to me now isn't it and that's just such a a huge thing that realization that that massive responsibility um, is is very very exhausting so it's so important that you look after yourself and that you know if people offer you help if people say do you want me to cook you dinner or do you want to come around for dinner or can I do anything for you think about the practical things things like can they do a load of washing for you can they um, you know bring you bring you something that you could warm up in the microwave or you know Honestly, don't be afraid of asking for help or accepting help if it's offered because, um, you know, you, you can't do it all your own. So hopefully you your little one will be much better this week coming and um, you'll be all right too and things will start to get easier. But do take care of yourself. Um, it's hard, isn't it? It's really hard. Um, JJ, you are asking about fear. Um fear is it's so hard isn't it fear happens either because you know there's genuinely there's something that you know, we need to be afraid of and, and sometimes there's stuff going on in our lives um that is really scary um and it is akin to anxiety because we have that sense of okay this thing is happening and this means that in the future this terrible thing might happen to me or to my loved ones um and fear releases the, the stuff that anxiety releases because I think anxiety is a, a fear you know a fear of what might happen the the what ifs and you can of course be afraid of a specific thing uh, afraid of you know something an event that is happening in your life um, a person that is being mean to you in your life and that's really hard as well I think it's really important that you talk about it 
that you can chat with someone else and perhaps get support and help in the best way that you possibly can. So um, if that's going on for you at the moment, JJ, then I really hope that you have support around you. Um, so, um, yeah, look after yourself. I'm not sure if that really um, answers your, your question about fear. I think, I think perhaps the thing to remember is that fear is not always with us, that it, it is with us um, at times, and then it can be worse at times, it can be better at times. And if you can talk to people and you can get help for whatever it is that's going on, then that feeling can pass as well, you know? So, um, I hope that helps a little bit. Billy. Uh, Billy asked a question, Billy Hunt asked about depersonalization and derealization. So, so those are things that um, they're connected with anxiety and it's a sense of being almost out of your body that, that either things don't feel real around you or that you're at a great distance to everything. It can be quite scary. You know, people have reported looking in the mirror and seeing their reflection and just not recognising that it's them. Um, and so it, it's a horrible thing. And I, I think that it's something that perhaps we haven't heard of until you um, have it happen to you or have it happen to someone that you know. Um, it you perhaps sort of think to yourself, oh my God, what, what's happening to me? This is absolutely horrendous. Um, so the thing to know is that it is a symptom of anxiety. It doesn't mean that you're going mad. It's the, your mind's and your brain's way of trying to protect you, to separate you from the awfulness of what's going on around you, potentially. Um, and so it is... A, a protective response to your environment, to what's happening, to your fear of what might be happening in the future. Um, and one of the ways that you can deal with it is um, A, reach out for help, because um, therapy can help you with this, but also to begin to create a, a life where things are much more structured, so you have structure and routine in your day. Um, so I think that that's... Um, that's really important to do um, and I, I think that there's there's a, always if you're feeling something that doesn't feel right if you're experiencing those those symptoms go to your doctor and just go and get them checked out because you know there's all sorts of um, reasons the, the reasons that that you know I work with people who have depersonalization doing realization is that it's purely connected to anxiety but you know there can be other things um, and other conditions where um, that it can be it can f you can feel these sort of symptoms so it's always worth getting everything checked out it's the same as if you have a physical symptom um, whatever it is go and get it checked out by your doctor because most of the time they'll be able to reassure you and say oh yes this is what's going on for you and it's completely normal and we can help you in this way and that way um and if it's something that's a bit more complicated or a bit more difficult then you've got help and they can point you in the right direction and perhaps refer you to someone who can help you um with, with they they have more experience so i hope that makes a bit of sense and helps you um so let's have a little look through. Um, so thank you for joining me. If you're just joining now and you're thinking, what's this woman talking about? Well, I'm, um, I'm Sarah, I'm a therapist, and I do these lives every, every Friday evening at six o'clock UK time, just to really talk about what, how your week's been, how you, you're feeling, um, what are the good things that have happened to you, um, what are the things that perhaps have been a bit more difficult and um, to sort of answer any questions that you might have. Um, I can only answer a limited number of questions, but I do my best. Um, if you look at my page, there's lots and lots of um, videos about, there's information about anxiety, there's um, things to help you with anxiety. So um, do go and have a look at that page and also if you can only stay for a little bit if you subscribe to my youtube page which is completely free youtube is completely free to subscribe to um then i always upload my lives and the other videos in the week as well um all around mental health mental well-being so hopefully you'll see that so if you have to go if you're off on a night out tonight 
then um, you can just catch up with it over the weekend or whenever you fancy it with a nice cup of tea or something. So let me have a little look. There's been lots of lots of um, comments coming through. Um, let's have a look, see if I can sort of comment on any of them. Um, yeah, Lynn's right, Nadine. It's really important that um, you you talk to your mental health team, talk to your nurses. If this live is too much for you, then just step away from it if it's too much and go and go and see one of your nurses and chat with them and they will be able to help you, okay? It's all right. Um, you can always watch it on the YouTube when you're feeling a bit better, okay? But just take it easy, take it slow. We're all here for you, sending you hugs. Um, Shauna, asking about health anxiety. If you have a look on my profile page, Shauna, at the bottom there's categories um, and there's a whole, there's videos that I've done specifically about health anxiety. So they, they might be interesting um, to look at. Hopefully that they would be for you. Um, let's have a look. Um, so, oh, Sharon's asking the same question about health anxiety. So maybe I'll, let me make a note of it. <laughs> So health anxiety. So I'll come back to that, Shauna and um, Sharon. I hope that's all right. Um, thank you for any of you who are following me. That's really lovely of you. And thank you for sharing the live. Hattie, I can see you shared the live. You can share it by just on the bottom of the screen. There's a, like a little arrow. And sharing it just means that you can, you can send it to someone. You can send it to someone on WhatsApp. You can send it to them uh, via TikTok. You can just save the link for yourself. Um, so there's all sorts of things. Um, so, oh, Lucy Lou, you are very lovely. Thank you. Oh, gosh, Nicola Jane. So, Nicola Jane, you're saying, I'm so sorry to hear that your mum is ill um, and that that's triggering your OCD um, and anxiety. Um, I've just made a note of that and I'll come back to you. So it won't be long and I'll see if I can look at that um, um, so Mel you're asking about is it normal to want to sleep after taking citalopram in the morning um, I'm not a doctor so it's not right for me to make any comments at all about meds um, what I would say is go and see your GP go and see the person that's prescribed it to you and ask them you can even call the surgery maybe and just say I need some advice on my meds um, so definitely do that. Don't struggle alone. If it doesn't feel right, if you're on meds and they don't feel right in whatever way, you know, talk to your GP and they can sort of tweak them to, to make them feel right for you. So I hope that helps a little bit. Um, um, thank you, Lynn. <laughs> so yeah, Lynn's right. I have loads and loads and loads and loads of posts on my page. So go and have a little look. I try and put them in categories so that you can, um, you can sort of find the stuff that would help you specifically. Um, and Maram, Maram Marufi, hello, I wanted to ask you about how to be better at being alone because every winter I get worse. Let me make a note of that. Um, it's hard being alone, isn't it? And I think um, it's particularly hard in the winter time um, because it gets dark and, you know, as, as human beings, we're social creatures. We, we need that human contact. So I made a note of that. Let me come back to that. I'm just going to scroll through and just have a little look, see if I've not um, missed anything. Um, let's see. And I can see Shauna and Sharon that you're chatting together. It's really lovely. This is exactly what, what this Friday Friends is about, is that, you know, you might come on here thinking, oh, I want to, ask, want to ask about this particular thing. And then you'll find that someone else has got the same thing as you. And it's hopefully you can, you know, chat and maybe follow each other. And then you've got a little bit of support there. It's, this is all about support and all about positivity. Um, I saw someone, someone else <laughs> commented earlier on in the feed saying, oh, how can you do a job that's so depressing? And I don't think it is depressing, you know. I think that it's absolutely a joy to do this job and to hopefully, I can't help everyone, um, but hopefully to help some people to feel a little bit better about themselves and to be able to find techniques to help um, themselves, to find answers to questions. 
So I, I don't find my job depressing at all. I find it really, really interesting because the clients that I work with and you know people that I meet via TikTok, by other um, social media pages, are absolutely inspiring. All of you, you know, I'm sure all of you have your own struggles. Um, you will have have had, you know, some of you have had really difficult things happening to you this week and over the past weeks and months, but you're still going, you're still keeping going. And that is an absolute inspiration. And so please, please do keep going. Um, so, um, Oh, and Chloe, I'm going to write yours down. Best place to look um, for a therapist. Okay, let me answer some questions. Um, okay, thank you for asking that question. So I've I've kind of um, written that down. So uh, Shauna, first question that I was going to answer from you, um, Shauna and Sharon, I know that you're both suffering from health anxiety. Health anxiety, I always think, like, excuse my French, but I always think health anxiety is a bit of a bugger really. Because it's um, when we're anxious, we're anxious for a reason. Something will have happened either in our current environment, or something's about to happen, or something's happened in our past. Oh, excuse me. Terrible. Let me have a drink of water. Oh, God. Turning into my mother. Hmm. So, excuse me. Um, so something will have happened to trigger the fight or flight response. And so you start to feel anxious. Fight or flight is anxiety. It's the release of adrenaline and cortisol into your system, which gives you all the physical symptoms and also the, the overthinking and the sense of dread that people can experience. Um, and with health anxiety, because you're initially been triggered into feeling anxious about something connected to health, either your own health or someone else's health, um, you feel all those things and then you're thinking, oh God, I feel all these things, whatever it is, you know, my heart racing, my I feel sick, I've got headaches, I've got muscle aches and on top of what you're already anxious about, you've got all of that going on for you. And so what happens is it goes round and round and you get caught in a closed loop of anxiety about your health. And so even if you bring it down and you start to feel better and then you'll, you'll get triggered into a um, another loop and you'll feel the physical symptom, the symptoms of anxiety and then that makes your brain go, that means this thing. Um, does that make sense? And so it can go round and round and round with health anxiety. And as soon as you've sorted one thing out, your brain moves to another thing. So it's it's horrible. And I really feel for you if you're experiencing health anxiety. What I would say is to look at my page, look at the things that I always talk about. So because there's stuff that you can do for yourself. Um, so creating an environment of safety, connecting to things that make you feel good, give you the release of the hormones that dampen, they're muters, they mute down those those symptoms of anxiety um, and they give you the release of the, the hormones that make you feel safe and they tell your nervous system, I'm safe. Um, so, so that's going on for you um, and there's also techniques that I share that you can use in the moment to help you. So do have a look at those. But I really firmly believe, in my experience working with people with health anxiety, it's really, really well worth going to see a therapist about health anxiety because it it's about getting to the root of the issue and helping you reframe. So and until I think, I mean, I might be wrong, but I really think in my experience that getting to the root of where this has come from um, and reframing that, can be really, really helpful. And whether you go to a counsellor to do that, whether you go to a CBT therapist, whether you go to a cognitive hypnotherapist like me, um, it, it doesn't matter. It just needs to be the person that feels right for you. Um, and then that will be helpful. So I hope that makes a little bit of sense for you. Um, so take care of yourselves, um, Shauna and Sharon, and anyone else on here is suffering from health anxiety. Um, I feel for you, but there is an end to this, you know, you don't have to be feeling this forever. You absolutely can break out of that loop and come out the other side and, you know, be fine. So, 
but do make that step and reach out for help. And even if you've reached out for help and it's not helped you quite yet in the way you want it to, you know, maybe you just, maybe that person has, has taken you a certain amount of the way and now it's time to reach out to someone else. So, yeah. Um, so Nicola Jane, um, you was you were saying that you've got the awful situation where your mum is terminally ill. Um, so I'm so sorry to, to hear that. Um, and the fact that she's ill is triggering your OCD and your anxiety. Well, I think that it's it's completely normal. Anyone who has someone that they love and who is as ill as your, your mum is, um, you're going to have increased levels of anxiety. It's completely normal. I think the awful thing for you is that probably the OCD um, is getting worse and then that creates more anxiety and you've got enough on your plate, haven't you, to be dealing with without having all of your mental health stuff going on as well. So again, I would say go and see your doctor, go and see if you've been seeing a therapist, go and see your team and say, Look, listen, this is what's happening in my life. I need extra help at the moment, extra support. Um, you can do, you know, the things, I, I don't know if you've already seen someone, I would imagine that you have, and you will already have strategies that are helpful for you. Um, so I would say, um, you know, go and see them again, review what are my strategies, what can I do to help myself, to lower the levels of anxiety, to help myself be more in the moment. Um, you know, I, I think that that's really important. Um, um, to, to do that um, with OCD um, OCD is a protective behaviour and it's it's generally made worse when you're in a state of anxiety and protection so it's about trying to be in the moment to delay whatever it is that you're um, sort of being you have the, the, the need to do um, so yeah I, but I think the main thing for you is to get support for yourself in the best way that you can. I hope that helps. It's a real vague and general answer to your to your question, Nicola Jane, but I hope it helps a little bit. And I, and as an sort of an add on to that, I would say, please, please spend as much time as you can with your mum, making memories, doing good things together as best you can. Talk to her say all the things that you want to say to her. I always remember when my dad was dying, um, a really good friend of mine said to me, um, she said, you probably know this already, Sarah, but um, I just say what you need to say to your dad. Um, and it kind of, I was so grateful that she said that to me because it hadn't occurred to me. I'd never had anyone really close in my adult, adult, adult life who died. And I just didn't realise how how that would affect me when he did die. And I was so grateful that I did say the things that I needed to say to him. So I think that's, if you know, if you have someone in your life who's really ill, um, or, you know, just the people in our life generally, say what you need to say. Tell the people you love that you love them. Because unfortunately, when they do pass away, you know, that opportunity is gone. But if and when people pass away, it's a really comforting thought to know that you've told them how much they've meant to you, how much you love them. So I hope that helps a little bit. Um, thank you so much to everyone who's commenting and who's who's joining us. Um, um, oh, I can see a few. <laughs> There's so many really excellent um questions here so thank you so much for for all of them thank you for the likes thank you for following me thank you for the gifts that you send i so appreciate it it's so kind of you um, um let me see so i'm just um is there a filter on no there's no filter on <laughs> um Let's see, just having a look at this. So let, let me go on to my next question. So um, Mara Marufi, um, you, you were saying how difficult it is to be alone, particularly in the winter time, and how to deal with that. L loneliness is, um, 
Loneliness is so difficult, isn't it? And loneliness really a lot of the time is about the quality of the relationships that we have. Um, in winter time, um, it becomes really difficult for many people because it's dark so much of the time and the light, the natural daylight is so important for us, for our mental well-being. Um, and and, and um, to, um, so I, I think to bear that in mind, it's really important that we connect and we connect with other people, the right people who make us feel good about ourselves, connect with ourselves to be doing things that we, we enjoy and we love. I always say to my clients, you know, to connect to areas, I always give these certain areas. So connect with other people, connect with ourselves, connect with our animals, connect with nature, get outside, connect with exercise, connect with learning and creativity. Because when we're doing that, it's like we're opening doorways to a different part of our brain. Each one of those areas um, is connecting to a different part of our brain and releases the hormones that make us feel good. So serotonin, dopamine, oxytocin, endorphins, those are the hormones that make us feel safe, make our, at an unconscious level, they tell our nervous system, it's okay, you're safe. And, and it's so important to connect with the right people. It's, it's hard because, you know, sometimes those people are not there. So we have to think outside of the box a little bit, you know, and, and hopefully, you know, this Friday Friends is a little bit of helping people to connect. I see, um, you know, the good familiar faces turning up every week, every, every week and, and chatting amongst each other, following each other, um, chatting to one another. And, you know, so it, it's so important that we do that. Um, I think self care is massively important, um, Maram. It's it's um, self care is not about um, not about sort of doing worthy things like sitting in the lotus position for for four hours meditating. Is it? I mean, if unless that floats your boat, you know. It's but it's about doing stuff that you really look forward to doing and you love doing when you're doing it. And and you know like. Like t tonight for me, self care is about putting my feet up, having the fire going, watching some telly, and it's you know, it's probably rubbish telly, you know. And my my husband's cooked a lovely um, sort of stew thing, <laughs> and you know, being with with him, I'm very fortunate that I've got that. Um, and there's other times when it's like like I've met a friend today for coffee that I haven't met for ages. It was so lovely to just chat about what books we'd been reading, about what we were, what our kids were doing, you know, that kind of stuff. It just gives you the release of those hormones. So what do you all do? What do you do for self-care? Um, I hope that answers your question a little bit, Maram. And I would say uh, to get outside, to get in the natural daylight when it is light as much as possible, wrap up warm, get outside. But, but, but what do you what do you do for self-care? I'm going to just scroll through. And I, Chloe, I've not forgotten um, your question, but I'd really interested to see what do you do? Um, yeah, so oh, and Scarlett, say that again, please. Connect with ourselves, connect with other people, the right people. And we'll have different groups. Like, are you like me? Like I have, I have like my, my friends that I do this with and my friends that I do that with. And you know, the friend, so there's lots of different people that give you a different sense of connection. So other people, ourselves, animals, you know, if you have animals, they can give you that wonderful sense of connection, connecting with nature, connecting with exercise, connecting with learning and I don't mean sort of dry learning like oh my god I've got to write an essay it's learning like oh I've always fancied learning Turkish I'm going to learn that on Duolingo a free app or um, I, I've always fancied learning to draw and I'm rubbish at drawing but I'm going to I'm going to learn it you know I'm going to look on YouTube and learn how to draw you know there's all sorts of things everyone has different things um, and the last thing is creativity and creativity is wonderful and I think as adults we we forget to be creative you know and and you don't have to be good like you can do whatever you know you can you can learn a new recipe you can cook stuff you can bake you can um you can again learn to draw you can 
learn to sing you can play music you you can you can paint you can make stuff out of plasticine or clay you know whatever it is that you want to do you you can garden you know grow grow stuff that's all creative so um <laughs> so yeah that's the kind of thing so let me have a look so i've asked you to tell me what your self-care is and i haven't looked so let me see um so yeah lynn says my animals are my therapy um ali you walk your dog amelia you listen to music that's a, that's brilliant nicola jane you play music and so you're in the, and you're in the countryside so you can look at the countryside um <laughs> so Megan I'm seeing someone said that you had um a, a bath so you so was having a bath and Emma Jane soak in a bubble bath chill in the park walk in the sunshine oh I love those things um and poor old um baby Jabi Jabi said damn I wish I had a bath i yeah I totally get that you know so many new places nowadays people don't have baths and a bath can be really nice. So, yeah, Bella, skincare, meditation, cooking. Yeah, I'm I'm loving that. I love skincare. That is just such my... <laughs> when my boys are home, like, my boys are into their skincare too. And, like, the three of us, my husband looks at us like we're just, what, what, what are you doing? The three of us will be sitting here on a, on a Saturday night with, with face masks on. But it's fun, you know? It's nice. So um, let's have a look. Um, and and Hasbulla 95, 96 says, what if you have no motivation to do anything? Well, motivation is this magic thing that people think, oh yeah, well, I'm going to wake up, I'm going to be motivated. Motivation comes from taking action. So you might not have any motivation to do anything. So it's that thing of, okay, I'm going to put this in my diary. Tomorrow, I am going to go for a walk, for example. I'm going to go from here to the end of the road and back. And that's my bit of exercise and my being in nature. Um, and then the next day, it's a, again, do it again. Or you don't have to go for a walk. And it can be, you know, it can be something else, but something that you think, okay, I'm going to do this thing. And over time, it becomes a habit. And over time, it becomes, yeah, yeah, I need to do that. I need to do this thing. Over lockdown, I started walking a lot. And I've got to the stage where if I didn't walk, I'd be like, oh, I need to walk, I need to walk. So um, that's how you get motivation. It's by taking action. Even if it's a small thing, you know, five minutes, just do it, just do it. But I, I'm kind of mean to my clients. Quite often they'll say, I'll say to them, right, I need you to connect to these areas. And they'll go, yeah, yeah, I'll try. I say, no, no, don't try. Do it. <laughs> do it. Because that's the thing. It's, it's you know, if you want to, it, it, it's about doing it even if it's hard lean into that discomfort choose something that's doable but um you know it's it's about our green zones get really small when we're anxious or we're, we're suffering or we're lonely and we withdraw we withdraw we withdraw and self-care helps us to just push that green zone out and out. So we might have to just step into the amber zone a bit. So it's like, oh, I don't want to go for a walk. But you go, oh, I'm just going to go five minutes. And the five minutes stretches to 10 minutes. And you come back and you're like, oh, I'm so glad I did that. So that means that your amber zone becomes part of your green zone. So I hope that explains a little bit. Um, Let's have a look. Thank you so much, everyone, for, for following me, for sending likes. Um, um, oh, and Sam. Sam, so you're saying um, self-care, a few options for me, sorting and reorganisation rather than procrastinating. Yeah, that's such a good point because, you know, that lack of motivation can turn into procrastination. So you're thinking, oh, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow. Do it now. Do it now, you know, that's the thing. And being organised, being in a, in a space where you're organised, I, I like that. I find that I set a timer or like in the advert break, I'll go, okay, I've got three minutes, or I've got five minutes, I'm gonna, just going to go and um, load my dishwasher or I'm going to wipe my surfaces in my kitchen or I'm going to quickly hoover. <laughs> and quite often what I'll do is I'll, I'll hoover and I'll be like, oh damn my programs come back on and so I'll watch my program and then I'll just leave all the hoover there 
And then when it comes back on, the adverts come on again, I'm like, oh, a bit more, a bit more. I don't know, I'm revealing too much here. <laughs> so, Malcolm, hello. Nice to see you. Thank you all for being here. It's so nice to see you. Um, Debbie, you're learning how to knit. That's so cool. Um, and Mara Marifi, you're saying you feel like you're behind everyone else your age. Do you know what? There's no there's no set way of being. We're all, we all do different things. I didn't get my degree until I was in my mid-40s. I didn't train to be a therapist until I was 50. You know, there's no there's no right or wrong way. You do it at your speed. As as long as you end up doing, you know, doing it, then that's that's brilliant. <laughs> Let's have a look. Emma Jane, you want to learn how to knit? Yeah, go for it. Well, YouTube is a wonderful place. YouTube can show you how to do everything. I learned how to crochet in lockdown. I'm rubbish at crochet, but I learned how to do it. I've got various little squares. <laughs> I don't know what I'm ever going to do with them. <laughs> but yeah, learn stuff. It's good. So let's have a look. So Chloe, Chloe, Chloe Monty, um, how do you look for a therapist? So this was a really good question. Um, it's so how do you look for a therapist okay so there's lots of different ways that you can do so obviously the the, the first thing is to go to your doctor um to go to your doctor and ask your doctor now if you're lucky and you have a great doctor then they'll be amazing and really helpful and they'll help you find a therapist but the chances are that there's probably going to be a waiting list for a, a, a therapist on the nhs so um if you're happy to wait, then that's okay. Um, so that that's but that's a way to start. Another thing you can do, depending on what's going on for you and how you feel, is that you can talk to people that you trust and say, "Listen, have you? Do you know anyone? Have you ever worked with a therapist? Do you recommend anybody?" And quite often, you'd be amazed. A lot of people work with therapists these days. Um, therapists and there are people will be like yeah yeah i know someone they really helped me or they helped my friend and so you can go and um contact that therapist or a few therapists and and have a chat with them and see are they the right sort of person for me you can also um look at um going private you can look at you know you can look at various places so there's the the counselors directory there's all sorts of information on there about how to find a counsellor and also about all the different types of counsellors. There's so many different types of counsellors. They work in different ways. So have a look at the descriptions and think, is that what I want? Um, what do I want? And and then once you've decided the type of counselling that you want, then you can look at those types of counsellors, phone up a few, email a few and say, can I have a chat with you about you know working together? Um, you can look at the hypnotherapy directory. If you look in my profile, there's a link to a therapist finder where you can find QCH therapists. Um, QCH sounds, stands for Quest Cognitive Hypnotherapy. Oh, I think I might sneeze in a moment, so forgive me if I do. Um, oh. Yeah. oh, excuse me. Um, so there's there's that so you can do that if you're looking for a psychologist you can look in the psychologist directory google is an, a wonderful place or whatever search engine engine is your engine of choice um oh thank you jasmine <laughs> for saying bless me oh and thank you baby 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 jabby uh, that's very nice of you and lynn and debbie thank you <laughs> oh and san thank you so yeah, so you can look at the directories and if you if you just sort of search for therapists. Also, if you look at um, uh, charities, so Mind UK, Anxiety UK, all sorts of things, OCD UK, um, there are amazing charities out there and they will always have um, ways of finding therapists. And you can Google free therapy as well. Um, so there's lots of ways there. The main thing to do is to go with someone that you feel completely comfortable with. There's actually on my website, um, which is a, again, you can go into my profile and there's a link there and that takes you through or you can look at, um, I think it's, yeah, it's on that little thing at the top there, www.sarahairis.com. I did a blog. If you look at the tab that talks about 
blogs um i've written loads of blogs and there's a blog post there about finding a therapist how to find a therapist it's probably a bit old now but um there's some information there the most important thing is um a go with someone who um you you click with that is the right sort of therapy for you um someone you feel comfortable with someone you can afford someone who's not all about the money if they if they try and rush you if they try and hurry you then um just walk away you know if they're all if they're going well i need a deposit or i need you to do this i need you know it shouldn't be about the money i mean obviously as a therapist we have to it's our job we have to earn some money but don't bankrupt yourself going to therapy you know so i hope that helps a little bit let's have a look so thank you we've got 10 minutes left everybody so thank you ever so much for all of you being here it's really really nice to to see familiar faces and new faces i'm sarah and i'm a therapist and we're just here with friday friends chatting about mental well-being self-care um, anxiety and i have some really amazing um, um moderators who are volunteering my moderators are not therapists so you know they are not here to offer help and advice um with with therapy but what they can do is point you in the right direction to you know my my website to um to when the next live is and so on and so forth um so my my moderators are lynn 250 jasmine and vicky hodson and and i've not seen sometimes i also have vicky handlebars and zan shen um so i'm so grateful i couldn't do this without their kindness um san you're very kind um let's have a look so let's see um see and thank you so much thank you for that um lovely rose it's it, we're very kind all the i so appreciate the follows the shares the likes the, the gifts that you send it, it's just so very very kind of you so thank you let me see if i can answer a couple more questions oh thank you kaz <laughs> um Thank you, Nadine. You're very lovely. So um, let me answer. So I've seen a few people asking about um, QCH therapists. So QCH, QCH stands for Quest Cognitive Hypnotherapy. Um, the Quest Institute is the place that I trained. Um, and Quest Cognitive Hypnotherapy was founded by Trevor Sylvester. He's a therapist. He's been a therapist for 20, oh, probably 30 years now, I'd, I'd say, 25, 30 years. And he started the Quest Institute um, where, well, probably 20, 22, 23 years ago now. So the Quest Institute has been training therapists for 22 years. I, to let you know, I have like, a, a, it's not a conflict of interest, but I'm, I have an interest here. I am the training manager at the Quest Institute now. I've been working for them um, for the last couple of years. This is my second year. This is my second year. Um, my main job is I'm a therapist. I see clients privately, but I also work um, helping along. I, I co-train with Trevor um, therapists, people who are going to be therapists. So, and cognitive fitness therapy is a framework that um, it's an umbrella term really for a whole, um, a whole raft of techniques to help clients so we use aspects of aspects of um, NLP which is neuro neurolinguistic programming positive psychology um, CBT um, we use something called word weaving which is really important it's the thing that really separates cognitive hypnotherapy from um, from other therapies and other hypnotherapies because it's um, it's hypnotic suggestion but we we don't ever put anyone in a trance I and mean, we don't sit there with a pocket watch going look into my eyes or anything like that it's much more conversational um, and it's really positive it's about moving people from where they are now in a really gentle kind caring way to where they want to be and it's very much about the client taking control taking responsibility for their journey so the client will move at their pace um, it's evidence-based um, for the last, well, I think it's 2015, 2016, the research study that's been going on for a long time now was, was published 
uh, we're now and we're kind of close we've been really close to getting people to do um, a PhD study on the evidence that we have the evidence shows that quest cognitive hypnotherapy um, has helped people um, I think 71% of people who have QCH compared to 42% of people who have other talking therapies um, reported that they um, have felt that they've been what's the word recovered <laughs> yeah so I hope that helps a little bit explains a little bit um, whew, let me see um, gosh okay let me just see if I can answer we've got six minutes left see if I can answer something else um, da -da. um So, oh, Heather, thank you. You're being um, really helpful. There's a, a, a bell thing. What's that? I don't know what you are. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Um, so, Ed. Ed, okay. So, Ed's saying, I feel like I'm never going to be happy or have friends um, or a social life. I'm so sorry that you feel that way, Ed. Um, and it's it's completely understandable when you get to a place where you know life is really hard things have happened and it 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 can feel really true but none of us know what's going to happen in the future we can have periods of our life where life does feel very very difficult and we can feel very alone um but that doesn't mean that the rest of our life is going to be like that at all um you know i, I remember when my boys were born and i had postnatal depression and I can remember thinking, you know, absolutely, what is the point? Is it ever going to get better than this? I couldn't imagine that it would ever get any better. But it did over time. I sought help. I went to my doctor. I saw a therapist. And I came out the other side with lots and lots of life skills to help me to um, be able to begin to take those, those steps um, and to re reach out. So I think the first thing is to reach out for help, to realise that, it's okay to feel that way, but you don't have to feel that way. And someone else, um, someone who is experienced, can help you to begin to come out of that way of feeling, to give you that, that sense of hope for the future. And that is done just in small steps. And, you know, if, if you take some time, perhaps, over the weekend, to so look at my page, look at some of the videos, and um, perhaps begin to do things for yourself, um, that can help you begin to feel better about yourself and perhaps um, um, to begin to create um, connections and relationships with, with people that are, 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 are of greater quality because um, that's the thing, as I was saying earlier, it's about the quality of our relationships and learning how to do that can be really helpful and perhaps working with a counsellor can be really helpful. Um, with that so uh, good luck you know don't please don't suffer alone because you absolutely this doesn't have to be the, the way it is and it won't be because you will like you know me I got to a stage in my life where I look back and I thought oh thank goodness I kept going thank goodness I did reach out for help because you know life can be a wonderful place to be so but I feel for you it's horrible when you feel like that um right, let's have a look um so, um, grey spam, have you, do you have any tips for health anxiety? I spoke about health anxiety a little bit earlier on. So perhaps if you wanted to, you could go into my YouTube and this, this live will be on my YouTube um, either later on today, but definitely tomorrow. Oh no, um, so at some point, maybe tomorrow night, but over the weekend, um, it will be on my YouTube. But also I've, there's lots of stuff about health anxiety um, thank you for <laughs> those daisies. Um, there's lots of there's there's stuff that I've already done about health anxiety on my on my page. If you look at the bottom, there's categories. If you scroll through, there'll be stuff about health anxiety. And on my YouTube, I've spoken about anxiety quite a bit. So do perhaps go and have a look in the descriptions of various lives. There's I've it, it will say that I've spoken about health anxiety in them. So maybe have a look at those. Um, Let's have a look. Oh, Ed, it's my pleasure. <laughs> I hope that that helps. I'm glad that I saw your question. 
Um, sometimes I miss um, questions and I don't cover them all. So um, let's have a look. Oh, Jasmine. Well, if you're still here, goodbye and thank you for being here. Thank you for being my being my uh, one of my moderators today. So we've kind of got a minute left. So let's have a little, just a little think about something that you're going to look forward to in the coming week. Something that you can do over the coming days and the coming week that you can maybe come back next Friday because we'll do another live next Friday at six and you can come back and report on. So um, if you were thinking about, you know, oh, I'm not motivated or I feel this way, or I feel that way, um, then have a have a think about, okay, well, what's the thing that you're going to do this week and, and put it in the comments um, so that I can have a look and perhaps you can come back next week and maybe make a note of it and, and promise yourself, right, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to start this self-care. I'm going to learn this new thing. So what could you do? <laughs> so um, let's have a look. Let's see what's, what's, what are you coming up with? <laughs> I know it's hard. I'm putting you on the spot here, aren't I? <laughs> Let's have a look. Any anything anything that you are. Okay, so mysterious Miss Mia. I'm going to try and watch a movie for the first time alone. Excellent. So I will definitely remember your name, mysterious Mia. So come back next Friday, six o'clock. 6 till 7 next Friday evening UK time and uh, and tell me that which, which movie you saw um Trish you're going to go for a haircut tomorrow excellent that's brilliant Caroline Evans you're going to go for a walk every day a small walk every day fantastic that's such a good thing that I I love that that's it's definitely doable isn't it you know don't make it so it's huge it's like I always say to people make it doable so if you tell yourself I am gonna put my shoes on I'm gonna walk to the end of the road or to that lamp post and come back again then you know that is a success when you've done that um Nicole Nicola Jane you're gonna go for a swim brilliant that's oh gosh I miss swimming I haven't been swimming for ages that's so cool <laughs> Emma Jane says too early for a Christmas film Emma Jane and Jasmine had a chat this week about getting the old Christmas decorations up and I was taking the mick out of them saying it's November what are you doing and they quite rightly came back and said it's never too early for Christmas Christmas and Christmas decorations so Emma Jane go for it get your Christmas film out and uh and and just go for it I love it Sun, you're going to dye your hair purple. Brilliant, I love it. Go for it. Let us know if you've done that next week. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Malmros, I hope you're all right. It's so lovely that you've been here. Thank you for you, for your lovely kind words in the course of the week on all my videos. So thank you. I, haven't, I hope you have a lovely weekend. Let's see. Yeah, good, mysterious Miss Mia. You come back and that would be great. I'd love to see that. Let's have a look. What else? Jojo, it's so nice to see you. Welcome, welcome back. It's lovely to see you. I'm glad. I'm glad that you're here. <laughs> I'm always here. I've had this a lot. I don't know if it's that pesky algorithm. I've had a few people recently going, oh, I've not seen you for ages. I post it every single day. I occasionally will have like a Saturday or a Sunday where I'm like, okay, I'm just going to have, I'm not going, I'm not posting today. Um, but I post every day. So I don't know what's going on with that pesky algorithm. And, but um, it's always nice to see you. Um, yeah, so Carrie, oh Carrie, lovely to see you. Walking, I find walking really therapeutic. So Nadine, I really hope it'd be lovely if you can, if you can go home, but at the same time, it, if you know, it's really important that you get well. You know, it's better to be getting things sorted out, and you can go home when you feel you when you feel really well. You know, so we're all rooting for you and sending you big hugs. I'm all of us I know want you to be well before you come home don't just come home because you're thinking I want to be home although I can totally understand that 
but come home when you're when you're feeling so much better you know but you're doing brilliantly and we're so proud of you we're sending you hugs you take care so let me see um oh gosh oh i can't see that's a witty <laughs> Your skin is so lovely. We'd love to know your skincare routine. Oh my goodness. How long have you got? <laughs> I I love skincare. I really do. I'm like, I know it's completely off topic, but I, I use Tropic Skincare, which is vegan. Um, so I use that so I like to, as a cleanser. And then they've got a spray, which is a toner. And then I use, I use this Estee Lauder um, serum thing. What was it? I can't remember what it's called. It's the one in the like the brown bottle which is just amazing. And then I stay Lauder moisturizer. And I wash like my the cleanser off with a flannel. Um, and I always, always, and like since I've been 15 or 16, I have always, always had a skincare routine. Um, so it's like my one thing. If even like when I've had no money, I've always, you know, um, used like the cheapest whatever it is but i've always always used something and like always like using water to wash my face cleanse moisturize always <laughs> i hope that helps anyway i need to say goodbye my poor moderators they must be exhausted and you're probably exhausted as well so i'm gonna say goodbye um but I'll probably just stay around just like a, a minute or two more just to say goodbye to you individually if you would like that. My next live is next Friday at six o'clock UK time and I will upload this particular live to YouTube at some point over the weekend. But I hope that you all keep well, be kind to yourselves, speak kindly to yourselves, keep going. Um, and thank you so much for, for being here Thank you for being just the most lovely people and um, yeah, you take care of yourselves. Take care. I will see you, see you next week or see you in the week. <laughs> oh, now I'm going to just, oh gosh, carry lovely. Bye bye Ed. Oh Vic, it's so nice to see you. Goodbye Heather. Oh gosh. Bye bye Monique. Bye bye A Hepburn. Oh, I, oh, I said goodbye, Ed. Vic, it's lovely to see you. Thank you for being here, Vic W. Uh, bye, Nadine. Bye-bye, Rory. Uh, Bye-bye, Carrie. Um, no, your names won't be on YouTube. Um, your names won't be on YouTube at all, Naomi Monks. Um, um, I'm just, what I do is, if, if I mention someone's name, I'll mention a username that I'm answering someone's question. Um, and in the description, I'll say like I'm talking about hell's anxiety and panic attacks or whatever, but I don't use people's names names because um, I don't have your permission. But um, and, and it, this doesn't show up on the recording. So the, the comments don't show up. So I hope that explains. Um, so. Oh, gosh. Um, bye, Dee. Nice to see you. <laughs> Oh, no, don't worry. No, 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 don't worry, Naomi. No, I can understand. No, like, we can see, during the live, we can see the the, the comments. I, mean, I hope I'm right. I hope I'm right. But when I've ever watched it, I can see me talking and saying, oh, yes, stuff about comments, but I can never... I can never see the stuff that we can see actually during the live. So I hope that's okay. <laughs> but um, take... Take care, everyone. Thank you very much, San. You always were so kind saying thank you, Team Sarah. So have a lovely weekend, everyone. I'm gonna, I'm gonna head off now. Go and have my stew. <laughs> but have a lovely weekend. Take care, and I'll see you soon in the week and next week at six. Cheerio.